Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're in Northern California on Lake Davis trolling trolling flies for rainbow trout. Brought to you by Corning Ford, Procure, Clacker Craft, Yakima Bait, P-Line, Max Lure, Fishfield, Brad's Fishing, TrollingFlies.com, Oli's Charters, Fishhawk Electronics, and Fishang Products. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. This morning we're on Lake Davis with guide Ed Dillard along with Dennis Pierce. We're just going to probably go right out here and get started. Uh, we've been fishing, starting right here, working up towards the island, and then working over towards Camp Pie. What I chose to start out with was a really small tube fly. The fish have been up high in the mornings, feeding on the surface, and so I've got a real short piece of lead core on the line, and I'm gonna run this guy along the top, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, another piece of leader off of there and put a real small nymph in case they're feeding on insects instead of more of a bait fish imitation. But that's where we're gonna start with this particular rod this morning. Davis Lake is a flooded meadow and east side of the Sierras, it's an alkaline lake. It grows weeds like crazy. And that's gonna be a problem, particularly in midsummer is fishing around the weeds and not hanging up our gear in it. But because of the weeds, the insect and the population and the whole food chain here is extremely rich. And that's what grows the fish here so well. But uh, excellent food chain here, the opposite of what you're gonna find in you know a real big deep reservoir that goes up and down. This one does go up and down, but it doesn't get the real big bathtub ring around it. But it's the food chain is what drives anglers to come here to Lake Davis. This is what I've ended up choosing for start today. I went small with a relatively small, what's a soft hackle nymph. It's a traditional uh, sort of like a dead yeah, all around, something's got some movement to it. And then I chose a small a mini tube fly, uh, thinking that the fish are gonna be up on top feeding on small stuff. That's my theory for starting today with this rod. But uh, the trailing nymph, I've had good luck with it. Uh, I've had, in fact, I've caught brown trout a uh, year ago up at Gold Lake that uh, every single, I had relatively large flies, every single brown I caught was on the nymph on the trailing. And when we did keep one of the browns, when we opened it up, it had meat bees and insects in the inside of it. And uh, <clears throat> so they don't necessarily want you know, a minnow imitation, they will get into feeding on nymphs. So we're gonna see how this works today. We have a sling blade in here to give the uh, tube fly a nice action. It makes it wobble through the water and hopefully uh, I'll adjust the length of the leader to change the wobble. And we'll see, I'm gonna start off with the, about this long right here and we'll see what it does. And this rod, we've got the two each chub trailing with the little nymph. Here again, we're shooting for the fish that have been rising in the morning. We'll see what it does. We're going to take and we'll let it back about 125 feet, put it on the downrigger, and we'll probably put it down about six feet. And there are crawdads. There are snails, a little tiny snail that uh, sometimes you'll catch and start getting them and they'll just be loaded with them. Uh, years ago, there used to be a snail that was about as big as your nail. And in the fall, the fish would just be, you could feel the crunching in their bellies they were so full. But I guess through time, the uh, Fish and Wildlife told me that the other little snails become the dominant snail. There's four types of snails in this lake. So, also uh, the other food source in here is there are some golden shiners. And that's why they introduced the browns in here is to try to keep that population under control. So we may get a brown today. Yeah, four years ago, they introduced the browns here uh, to control the chewy, uh, the golden shiner population. And they're getting up to about 21, 22 inches. There's some real nice ones in here, getting three, maybe a four pounder. So hopefully today we'll lock into one of those. And today we got a little different conditions than we've been having. We've been having nice bluebird days, sunny, uh, fish rising. This morning we got some cloud cover, a little breeze. Uh, sometimes the breeze can help though. It'll make the boat move a little bit, get a little action on those flies and lures, and we'll see what happens today. 
Angler West is made possible with support from companies like TrollingFlies.com. The new vampire leech is irresistible to fish. Buy it now at TrollingFlies.com. Welcome back to Lake Davis. I'm Justin Wolf. We're fishing trolling flies, which is a proven technique on these flooded meadow lakes once you learn the basics. Yeah, I don't like to dumping everything in there. Keeping a little tension on it as you go keeps things from being tangled. And what we've got here is a real short piece of lead core behind. We're already out to 50. We've got 60 or 70 feet a liter and then a short piece of lead core on it to get it down. The reason I'm using the spinning rods is this is a lot like fly fishing. Uh, I have a nice eight and a half foot rods. These fish get a lot of action on that. You've got the fish on just a little fly and a nice light rod. Uh, they come up to the boat and they like to just take off real quick. And I've had before when I had some stiffer rods, they would tend to break off the or pull off the uh, fly. I took a look at the sky and we don't have the sun come up yet at all. What I put on was an olive tube fly and then a peacock and gray nymph behind that and if you look up at the sky the fish I'm running it one two feet below the surface and what I'm trying to do is look for a fish that's looking up and skylighting it and see the contrast between you know being able to spot that nymph or the tube fly from below what I'm doing is I'm pulling the rod a little bit to make them surge and pause, surge and pause, surge and pause. And the tube fly will open up a little bit when on the pause and on the pull, it'll collapse, you know, it'll tighten back up and give sort of a swimming motion. And trout are visual feeders. And what I'm after is a visual key, making it look like it's alive for them to put it in their mouth to see what it tastes like. What we're gonna be looking for today is we'll meet her here the weeds are going to be in the center here. We're going to be trolling right along the edge of those, and then we're going to go over by Camp 5, and also where the weeds are coming up, and the bugs will be hatching, and hopefully the fish will be in there with them. If you look, we've got a little bit of weeds here, and then if you look, we've got some fish right above where those weeds are. Uh, hopefully they'll be coming up. We may have to drop the lines down a little bit and see if we can get to, down to them and get them on that uh, chewy jump. I just dropped this one down to about 13 feet. We'll see if that uh, does the trick. I have not seen any fish rising yet this morning. Have you, Dennis? No, I have not. not nothing's come up to the top that yeah. I've been able to see. We're going to get over here towards Camp 5, and uh, the wind might be down a little bit. And it's been a good hatch around 9 o'clock, so we'll see what happens. The so hatch the last week or so has been anywhere from a damselfly to a uh, uh, cat calabatus, and then the uh, blood midge has been hatching. And one day we had all three coming off at one time, and the fish were rising, and you couldn't hardly keep them off the line that day. Hopefully we'll get some kind of action like that today. One thing about being on Lake Davis, uh, you can always count the wind to blow. It's not if it's going to blow, it's what time is it going to start. You know, a lot of times it's 9 o'clock, sometimes 10 o'clock, sometimes noon. Uh, lately it's been more like 9. This morning it was at 6. So we'll see what happens. Though. It's sometimes uh, the wind can help, though. We get a little more action on the lures and uh, flies and uh, the boat does a little zigzagging. One of the fresh planters, he's off there nicely, and away he goes to be a bigger fish. Caught that one. This is the uh, J Fair Tui Chub, correct, Dennis? Most of the fish lately been running uh, about 17 and a half inches up to about oh, 22 inches. Where they put the planters in, so we have to sort through those to get to the bigger fish. This one here is the J Fair Tui Chub, but it's a real generic minnow imitation with a white bottom and an olive back to it. It could be a baby bass, it could be all kinds of different things, but this, if you look into the water here, this is soupy green water, and whatever's gonna be in the water is typically gonna have an olive back to sort of camouflage them in there. But, you know, olive over a white belly, that is the Tui Chub minnow, but could be a lot of different things. And it's got copper flash in it, which is the traditional J Fair thing. And I don't know if we can catch that in the light on the camera or not. But the thing about copper, it's if you look at, at it right next to brass or gold, there's a lot of red in copper. The, it doesn't, not real apparent when you just look at copper, but compared to brass or gold, there's a lot of red in it. And I think that's one of the attractions to the, uh, you know, the whole J-Fair system. Almost every single one of his flies had copper in it as the flash. Years ago, when I was selling, uh, 
flies, I did a trip down the Eastern Sierras and I went, typically a, a fly salesman shows up in September after summer is over and gets early orders for the following year's delivery. And the one thing I was looking for was what was empty on the pegs on all the shops as I worked my way down the Eastern Sierra. And the most common denominator was stuff that was gold and red. The, whether it was a Panther Martin or a Thomas Boyant or a Castmaster, you name it, the red and gold was pretty much empty pegs throughout that whole region. And so when I was doing the two each of for my tube flies and my Arctic Fox trolling flies, I did it olive, but I did red and gold flash. And typically I'd do two pieces of gold for every one red, because that was sort of what I was seeing on the spinners and stuff. And the two each of that we've been doing is, uh, the flash on it is gold and red. And on the J Fair, Coincidentally, not causally, but coincidentally, the, the Tui Chub has got the copper flash, which is really a blend of gold and red. Because copper, if you hold it next to brass or next to gold, copper's a lot, got a lot of red in it. We're going back to Lake Davis, but first, here's your Fishfield Tackle Connection. Now, today we're trolling for trout with flies that are typically built with either feathers or fur and tinsel and all kinds of great materials that give a lot of action in the water. But if you were to put a scent on them with regular oil or gel, it's just gonna ruin your flies. So that's why fishfield.com carries the full selection of Procure water soluble oils. These oils have the same scent of all the other gels and oils and everything that Procure produces. It's just in a water soluble form. This is really awesome comes with a spray cap, so you, you're just spraying it on your feathers and it won't hurt them at all. Now there's 12 total scents available in the water soluble, so it's a great selection and Fishfield has them all. Take a look at this tube fly. This is a new product available at trollingflies.com. It's a squid pattern. It's a tube fly, so you're gonna rig it just like a hoochie. The line runs through here, comes out, one or two hooks, however you wanna rig it. This is a really cool looking product. And you spray this down with some of this sardine or shrimp or any of the water soluble Procure scents, put it in the water and see what happens. Now, let's go back to Lake Davis and see if we can't hook up with some of those beautiful Lake Davis trout. We've hooked our first quality rainbow of the morning, but it's fought hard enough to tangle the line. But it's an example of the exceptional rainbows found in Lake Davis. Get that line out of the way as well. Yeah, we might. It feels like it was a pretty nice little fish. Mm -hmm. We made a move. We're coming away from the Camp 5, heading to where I call Wally Point, and it feels like we got a pretty good fish on here right now. Dennis, watch your line. You're going to go over the. You got to go. Under? You got to no, know over the top. There you go. Okay, there. Real. Get it in. I'm, oh, well, he just jumped out there. Did you see him? Yeah. Switch pace. Over like, you? Right there. Okay. Nice. Look at on that fly, look at that color on the fly. Dennis, can you net the fish for me? All right. I think I got it. That one, I think I got it freed up there. I'll have a little fun with it. Now, did you want to keep a fish to eat? Not me. No. OK. Ready? So are you want me to scoop them, or are you yeah. just going to pull them to No, me? I'm going to get you them. You want to back up and get behind me. Nope. That there was we go. a good fish. Well, that was a nice catch and release. Yes. Because I have the same fly in size 8. See, they come in size 4s and 8. That was a 4. I've got it in an 8. Let me see if I've got another 4. And if not, we're going to go with the small 8 and see what we get there. But what it is is really a bright yellow with just a little top knot of orange on it. But that touch of orange on the top of them makes them really light up hotter in the water. And Jay Fair, who I knew back in the day, he said that this was, if he was gonna go for a brown trout, the all around best would be the fly that he would put on for doing that. But uh, anyway, a lot of movement in that marabou, even in the air. 
Well, we just caught that fish there. I just made a little turn. We're going to make another pass, see if we can catch another one on that. It, uh, it's been a good spot in the past. Found it by accident, actually trolling back one time down about 25 feet, going along. We hung four rods, uh, marked the spot, and it's been a good spot ever since. When you first have the fly and it's dry and real bushy and we got some wind blowing here, you can end up with the materials wrapped around the hook, like the tail, that sort of thing. So all I like to do is get it wet and make sure that that, that, that is not happening. I'm trying to keep everything and it, it runs true. It will lay on its side or not run well if the tail is wrapped around the hook. So I like to get it wet, make sure that you know, we're good to go there. I'm gonna put a little procure on the back side of this. And maybe get a scent trail going there. Now that fly will have a slight vibration just dragging it behind the boat, but the sling blade or a lot of different things or manipulation will make the materials move a lot more. And depending on the day is what it is that the fish want. We've got more fishing to do, but first here's your Yakima Bay Minute. Yakima Bay sells millions of rooster tails worldwide every year. Now rooster tails are made with a little bit of feathers tied on the hook. Now you don't want to put regular scent like oils or gels on those feathers or it'll ruin them. So that's why Yakima worked with Procure to develop the rooster tail scent spray. This is made with Procure water soluble scents. It won't ruin your feathers on any type of lure and it works great. One thing I like about the Yakima scent is actually the bottle. It's a nice slim profile bottle that fits easy in your pockets and your waders, wherever. It's real handy and it works well. People ask me all the time what my favorite scent is. I don't know what my favorite scent is, but I know I carry this shrimp with me everywhere. And I don't really care what type of lure I'm using, I still spray this stuff on everything. Now you can find Rooster Tail Scent Spray at fishreel.com or wherever you buy your tackle. Welcome back to Lake Davis, I'm Justin Wolf. This mountain lake near Portola, California is well known as a hot spot for trolling flies. You've heard Dennis mention Jay Fair in this episode. Jay Fair is considered the father of trolling flies and Lake Davis was one of his favorite fisheries. To learn more about this technique, go to the Angler West YouTube channel and watch the Jay Fair video produced in 1999 with Jay Fair. It's full of all the details you need to know to become proficient in this type of fishing, including fly selection, how to set up your rod, reel, and line, and how to work the flies for success. Also, find past episodes from Eagle Lake, Jay Fair's home lake, plus Lake Almanor, another favorite of Jay's. But today, the trolling fly concept continues to evolve on Lake Davis. This is a two tube fly rig. We've got an action disc up above it. And this original idea came from Brian Ricucci at Lake Almanor. And he does pairs of white ones when the pond smell are that size, young of the year, over there and does well with them. And I adapted it to kokanee fishing recently up at Stampede Reservoir, and this worked. Uh, it's got UV colors to it and some beads and that sort of stuff, but uh, running a pair of flies, I think maybe a little more visible from a distance or maybe gives the fish more confidence, I really don't know. But uh, it's worked for me on a number of occasions. In fact, the two tube fly rig uh, working with larger tube flies worked up in the ocean out of uh, Washington State for silver salmon last year. But uh, So I'm sort of a believer in a two fly system and I think what we're going to do here is switch to olive because that's what the fish seem to want to bite the trout here at Lake Davis. The way I have it rigged up is I'm starting with a swivel up at the top coming down to an action disc that's adjustable uh, six to eight inches above the top fly is the max. I mean, I can run it all the way down to the fly and it'll animate this one. And then the trailing fly still has a bit of movement to that. But in the water, it, uh, you know, you got a, two different things for the fish to hit on. Yeah, we came back to where we uh, started, dropped in this morning and we're gonna cut across here and back over there to camp five. And we'll try hitting that tack we did first thing this morning see if we can pick up a couple more. Sometime in the last month, they put a lot of fish in here. Uh, May 29th. 
and uh, that's what is going to make our fishery for next year. One of the neat things about the tube flies is that when you hook the fish, the tube fly can slide away from the hook. And I tend to use short shank octopus style hooks so that the, it's harder for the fish to throw a short shank hook. And if the fish will pull away from you at all, the tube fly will slide up the line and the, the fish can't chew on your fly. But uh, a lot of advantages to tube flies. But you can see how it moves up and down on the line. Okay, don't pump the rod too much on those. Okay. Just to steady yeah, is what Just steady is better, yeah, because when you pump, when you, most people, when they let it down, they tend to slack a little bit on those. Okay. Just keep it coming. Slowly or? Yeah, just keep, keep them in the rod. What I might do is let the boat turn Okay, a now bit. he's on the surface. Okay, good. Just keep it coming and I'll get the net when he gets close. We'll get the downrigger out of the way. He's actually heading into the wind a bit. He slowed the boat down a little bit. That's how we were losing the other guy. He messes around a little bit, slow, goes too slow. There you go. Now he's starting to pull. Yeah. Okay, if he goes to the other side, just go with him. Okay. There you go. That's the one. Our clock's two fly in two each of them. All of them. you found today's episode valuable and it helps you catch more fish. And be sure to watch this episode again and hundreds of other episodes and helpful videos on the Angler West TV YouTube channel. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, without our sponsors, there is no show, so please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.